All right, it's the, uh, we are at Gartner Data and Analytics Summit and it's day two. Day two, exciting times. Very excited to have uh, Raj and Sanjeev with me here at uh, Professi and uh, I'm super excited to chat uh, a lot about data and analytics, low code transformation, uh, Sanjeev AI and uh, also more about the enterprise AI. So, uh, just for our audience, would you like to start with the introduction, maybe? Raj? Raj. Okay. So, uh, hi, I'm Raj Baines. I'm the founder CEO of Prophecy. So, we are a low-code uh, data transformation product. And I've been in the data space for a while. I was the manager for, uh, for Apache Hive at Hortonworks. I've seen a lot of challenges with big data and super excited to make people more productive with data. Hi, and I'm Sanjeev Mohan. I am an analyst, an independent analyst with Sanjmo, but I was with Gartner, and we're standing here right next to the, the beer the hall, and so <laughs> we've got a lot of people. Yeah, so Sanjeev, everyone's watching you. Uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, obviously, uh, since we are here and it's day two, and you guys are talking to a lot, a lot of data leaders, a lot of enterprise leaders. So what's uh, your read of the market in terms of the data and analytics, but uh, also in the low code uh, transformation, like the data transformation world, how's it going? Sanjeev, you can start, then I, Raj. I can, I, yeah, I can give the market perspective, yeah. and then Raj, you can dive deeper into prophecy. Sure. So from a market point of view, what I'm hearing from customers is that there's a uh, lot of complexity. It used to be that you know, we had only a few source systems and they were easy to transform. Uh, most of them were in-house anyway. Right. And now you've got hundreds of SaaS tools, you've got complex data transformation pipelines, and they're writing to multiple data sources. You know, like a lot of companies will ask, uh, should we do Snowflake or Databricks? It's not or Most companies have multiple target uh, systems. So simplification becomes really important. How yes, do you definitely. Simplify, right? So, yeah, definitely. So we are seeing a lot of that as well. As I'm talking to a lot of enterprise leaders, who a lot of them have come to our booth. Uh, we've uh, talked to you know, met them at dinner, and a lot of it is about productivity. A lot of the right. enterprise data users yeah. are like, I have so much opportunity in analytics, in business intelligence, but in AI, and for all of that, I need to get my data in order. Right, they are stuck on premises. They are like, I want to get productive in the cloud, and a lot of it is like, how do I make every data user be able to self-serve, be able to build pipelines, make the line of business go much faster. So a lot of it is about ease of use, about productivity. Yes, we have very powerful platforms. We have Databricks, we have SQL data warehouses, yeah. but but a lot of what I'm hearing is, I want to do more with less. I want productivity. I want my team to you know be enabled to go really fast. So a lot of our customers are talking about uh, how you know can we use low code? Can we use no code? Uh, you know how do we become more productive with data? So that's what I'm hearing. So also, uh, Raj, you are talking about team, but yeah. a team consists of a lot of people, right? Yes. So one of the challenges that I see is yeah. that the the data producer side, so data engineers and all use one tool. The data scientist uses a different one. The right. data steward has something else. True. So I think prophecy is also helping consolidate, right? So yeah, definitely. So I think what we are seeing is that people set up a data platform. They are like, oh, we are going to go on Databricks. We are going to go on Snowflake. Maybe both. And then uh, that there's a d data engineering team. Uh, they can write code, yeah. and they are writing code. Then on premises. They have an Informatica, they have another ETL tool, a data stage, and they're like, how do we get these people to be productive just within the data platform team? Then it's like, okay, maybe we can do something there, but then what about the line of business people? You've got the data analysts, you've got the data scientists, and it's like, how do those people become productive? Some of them are using Alteryx. They're like, okay, that's a whole second system to take care of, runs on desktop, whole tool. I don't want to have a second system. I want my data bricks, my snowflake, whatever I've chosen, I want to make the business users productive on that. So I think that's a lot of what we're seeing and that's where Prophecy excels. We enable not just the production difficult ETL that the central data platform team does, but also the line of business, data analysts, data scientists, to be productive on the same platform with a low code, easy, self-serve 
uh, visual drag and drop interface. So we are seeing a lot of that, unifying the teams, making the infrastructure yeah. so much simpler. So, so it's interesting that you mentioned all these tools, because you know what I end up seeing? Yeah. I end up seeing that the uh, customers have a ton of these operational systems. Then so, they've got uh, Fivetran, Stream, uh, a whole bunch of like uh, data ingestion tools. Right. Then they've got DBT, Informatica, App Initio, Apache Spark. Right. Then they've got all the data transformation. Then they have data preparation like Altrix. Then they have uh, Looker, Tableau, Power BI, Snowflake, or Databricks for storage. Uh, and then we haven't even talked about data observability. Vendor, exactly. Data catalog vendors, and they've had all. So many. So many. So many. Right. So now, here is the challenge. So a CFO shows up to work. And, right. and looks at the dashboard and says these numbers don't look right. <laughs> Something is broken. Right. Okay. Who yeah. do you who do you talk to? Talk because to. there's uh, there's so many touch points where things can fall through the cracks. Right. So that's a very good challenge to have as well at times. I feel Sanjeev, but uh, you're right. Uh, that's one big challenge that all the data leaders kind of face, and when it comes to CFO they feel the numbers don't match, we are right. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, quickly shift gears into what's in the next six months that you see moving in the data and analytics space uh, and in the AI space as well. Like, because AI is quickly, yeah. you know, it's getting there. Uh, I see a lot of enterprise AI as well, which is kind of, you know, the it's people are kind of betting on it a bit. Uh, so, for Raj, I have a question which is around Professi Copilot. Sure. I've seen that. I want to know a little about that. And then Sanjeev, you tell us about where the space is moving Yeah, in the next six months. So I'll, I'll let Sanjeev take the AI question. It's moving way too fast for me to keep track <laughs> of. Uh, for us, it's applying generative AI right. to data transformation. Everybody needs to do data transformation. It's not going to get automated, all of it. But you can make things much simpler. The first thing that Prophecy Copilot does is you can write in natural language what you want to build in a pipeline and the visual pipeline will get auto-generated. Maybe it takes you 80% of the way there right. and then you edit it, get it all the way across. Now you can do it for, you know, you can write English and it will build you the whole pipeline or you can go in and say, I just want something fixed like this for the date. Hmm. And what it does is like a data analyst or something, they don't need to understand complex SQL expressions they can just write in English what I want and the expression gets generated. Okay. So a lot of the data transformations are getting generated and then there are other things that people don't like to do. Nobody write, likes to document, nobody right. likes to write right. unit tests. We are automating all that away. As you build the pipeline, you can just say, oh, write an explanation of what this pipeline is doing and we'll do that. So generate tests for me, I don't like to write tests. So it is all pushing towards productivity, about quality, all of it automate, automatically, of course, based on large language models. It's amazing how much, and it, this is going to change things quite a lot. Yeah. Because we are going to move uh, things, make them a lot more productive very, very fast. So the next year is going to be exciting. Sanjeev? Yeah, uh, these are exciting times, no Exactly. Doubt. Fantastic, Raj. Because, you know, we've been doing a lot of rule-based, uh, metadata based stuff for the longest yeah. time, right? But now we can augment all that with semantic knowledge, right. or contextual knowledge. Exactly. So, so the point that I, I try to make is that in the next six months, people should really be plugged into AI. They should not be plugged into, oh, AI has failed and AI has done this. Exactly, exactly. Because, because the thing is that it's like any new technology. We, we are learning and we're getting better, it, it will get more accurate. And AI, at the end of the day, like in prophecy, it's a co-pilot. Yeah. 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 So who is the pilot? <laughs> it's the AI. Users, right? Yeah. The and users. users. Yeah. Yeah. So the users are the pilot and, uh, and all of this AI stuff is your assistant. So use it well. Yeah, okay. So I would say at the current stage, it's all about giving superpowers to the data analysts, to the data scientists as they're transforming data, making them more productive so they can do more with less. I think that, that's, that's what we are seeing. This is today. amazing. Uh, thanks for sharing all the insights, but uh, one last question, and I promise this is the last one. I know it's already evening, we're end of the day. Yeah. Uh, I, I can see the drinks. Yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, in, you know, and this could be a, 
you know, it, it could be your personal opinion. Any two names that come to you when you, t you know, look at AI, any two maybe companies name that are doing pretty good in AI? I don't want to mention company names, A, but, yeah. because as an independent analyst, <laughs> I want to stay independent, but, but actually there's another reason. I don't think any company today yeah. has a hold over AI. AI is a green field, yeah. and, and, and I'm saying this on purpose because I believe that any company that executes well has an opportunity because nobody owns AI, it's a uh, work in progress. Right, okay. Uh, and and uh, to add my two cents here, similar, I'm not an independent analyst, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to stay independent, but then there's nothing else to say in the sense that the technology is moving so fast. There's the proprietary products, there's the open source products, so there is the platforms, which seems like a race to the bottom. And then there are the applications where it's so early, right? We, we, we will not know for a few years who the winners are. So many people, so much excitement, so many new things being built. It's just crazy time. So and I'm just, it'll take a couple of years to figure out. Yes, and we're all learning. We're all seeing all the amazing things that are happening in uh, every day. We are getting new updates about new things. So super exciting. This was great. Thanks, Raj. Thanks, Thank Sanjeev. Uh, Thank such you. a pleasure to have you both on the Ravid Show and uh, definitely looking forward to chatting more. Thank you. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.